This should go without saying, but the way you look at yourself is one of the main factors of both your success and your failures. We all have an image of ourselves that makes us who we are. It defines what we like and what we don't like, what we can do and what we cannot do. Expand the self-image and you expand what you can do. For the most part, the image that we have of ourselves comes from a set of experiences throughout our life. For example, if you struggled at a math problem as a kid and your teacher told you that you were bad at math and then the rest of the class treated you the same way, you might have grown up believing that you were bad at math, even though you were more than capable of solving the problems. And realistically speaking, most people get stuck at math problems from time to time. Or the opposite could have happened. You got stuck at a math problem as a kid and your parents and teachers told you, you're smart, you can definitely figure it out, let me help you. Then they guide you to solve it until you feel very capable of solving those problems. In the book Psycho-Cybernetics, Dr. Maxwell Maltz explains that all of us have a type of servo mechanism in our brain that self-corrects according to our mental picture, our self-image. Let's break it down a little further so we can understand it better with a few examples. Let's say that a person grew up thinking he was bad at math. That became part of his self-image. So this person truly believes he's bad at math. Even though he's more than capable of solving the problems, he might even know how to solve the problems, but he might feel overwhelmed when something seems slightly too complicated and then becomes unable to solve them by saying that he is just bad at math and he can't do it. This feeds the mental image that he's bad at math. Many people call this the self-fulfilling prophecy. Another powerful example is how many people see themselves as overweight when in physical and medical reality, they're not. This goal-seeking servo mechanism that we all have in our brains is incredibly powerful because it keeps us consistent to our self-image. Without this, we would not have a true identity. This is one of the reasons why sometimes it's hard to change a habit. Willpower will not be sufficient because our self-image is not aligned to the goals that we're trying to achieve. By aligning our self-image with our goals, we become a lot more capable not only of changing a few habits, but becoming the type of person who do them naturally. As Dr. Maltz explains, we can actually build and influence our self-image putting us in control of our servo mechanism rather than leaving it to the environment to control. The way we do this is by using a little brain hack, an ability that differentiates us from any other species on the planet, our creative mechanism, our imagination. Now, when we hear the word imagination, we think of kids pretending to ride dragons in the backyard, but thinking about it more closely, imagination is what makes us creators. That is the way the world was built around us, from skyscrapers to cars in the street and planes in the air. Our ability to picture and create things that aren't there yet is a unique ability that, when exercised, can be very powerful. Maltz explains that our brains can't distinguish between real experiences and imagined experiences. This is why we feel stressed just by thinking that something bad might happen. Even our bodies react releasing oxytocin just like if it was a real threatening situation. Now, remember that at the beginning of the video, we talked about how our self-image is a compound of internalized experiences. This means both real experiences and experiences that never actually happened, which can explain phobias. So taking control over self-image can begin with something that Maltz calls synthetic experience. This is to create an adequate and realistic image of yourself that you're happy with and vividly imagine performing the activities that you would do if you were that type of person. For example, it is harder to become fit and healthy if you consider yourself to be the opposite. If you see yourself as a very unhealthy and unfit person, you will feel inadequate when performing the activities and exercises that it takes to get in shape. But if you vividly and consistently imagine yourself being a healthy and fit person, doing all of the activities and exercises like if it was a normal routine for you, will make it much easier to actually achieve it. For example, if you're like, okay, I'm working on leg exercises today and eating this many meals a day, I will need to build a schedule for my workouts and meals so there's no chance I can miss a meal because we, the healthy people, don't let anything get in the way of our health. By familiarizing yourself with the end goal, you can trick your brain to think that you are the type of person that will normally do the things needed to achieve your goal. And your self-image starts to change. 
See, the way our servo mechanism works, like Dr. Maltz explains, is like the goal striving mechanism of the self guided torpedo. Once the target is locked into an objective, it'll self correct until it reaches the destination. If the torpedo is going a little further to the left, negative feedback will reach the goal striving system and correct itself by returning to the right path. This is the same with our brains, the reason why we have a compulsive need to be consistent with our self image and the beliefs that we have is because our goal striving mechanism does the only job it knows. Receive the objective, lock in the target and chase that objective correcting itself on the way if our actions don't match with the objective. Of course, this requires a clear picture of the end goal, so consistently visualizing your end goal with detail is important to make that objective clear. Many successful people use visualization to help them have a clear, wider image of their goal. Now we understand why people who have consistently stream of negative thoughts seem to always have very bad luck, because it became the objective of this goal striving mechanism. Of course, I'm not saying that if you just imagine something will happen, it'll just happen without effort. Imagining being a millionaire will not automatically make you rich. You will have to put in the work. But there's something I can tell you. You won't be able to achieve something if you can't even imagine it. In the book, Dr. Maltz talks about how every person is hypnotized by their beliefs, whether those beliefs came from others or we repeated them to ourselves over and over. We are hypnotized by the things we believe to be true. Maltz says that just like a hypnotist can convince a bodybuilder that he cannot lift a pen, we have been hypnotized by everything around us, especially as kids, to accept certain things as facts and therefore beliefs, especially when it comes to our own self-beliefs. So if we have limiting beliefs, Maltz recommends us to ask ourselves, why do I think I can't do certain things? Is it logical? Or is it because I failed once or twice at it and I just assume I couldn't do it? Why should I continue to act and feel as if those old beliefs were true when they are actually not real? And that was a quick review of the book Psycho-Cybernetics by Dr. Maxwell Maltz. A book a little hard to summarize, so definitely check it out. Let's have a quick refresher of the main ideas of this book. Number one. Our self-image comes from a set of experiences we've had in our life. Number two, we all behave according to that self-image due to our brain's servo mechanism. Number three, we can all influence our self-image by using our creative mechanism, our imagination. Number four, our brains can't distinguish between real experiences and imagined experiences. Number five, our brain's servo mechanism works like a goal striving system kind of like a self-guided torpedo. Number six, we experience a sort of hypnotism by the things we believe are true. Number seven, we can logically ask ourselves if a limiting belief actually makes sense to be able to catch beliefs that are limiting what we are capable of. As always guys, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe for more awesome videos. And now we'll see you in the next video.